Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Ultimate Exotics returning once again to the world of Gran Turismo 2 and this time for one of my favourite cars, probably in my top 5 in fact, from Gran Turismo 2, the Venturi 400 GT. Kind of like France's answer to the Ferrari F40, very much so a true French supercar. Now, as I've said before, of course, there are a number of Venturi models on Gran Turismo 2. You've got the 600 LM race car, you've got this one, the 400 GT, and a car which we've already reviewed, the 300 by Turbo. Now, I also love that car, but that vehicle is much better as a rival to something like a Porsche 911 or a Lotus Esprit, for instance. This one, much more so, is a rival to stuff like the F40, the 959, that kind of thing. However, the ironic thing is, and I did touch on this in the review for the 300 Atlantic by Turbo, is that that is actually a more powerful car, which is kind of a strange thing. This car is powered by a mid-mounted 3.0-litre V6 turbo engine. It's rear-wheel drive, as you'd probably assume anyway, but fully tuned, it has no way near the kind of numbers that you probably assume it would have. You are only allowed to fit a stage one turbo upgrade to it, and as a result of that, you're looking at 476 horsepower in peak form, and kind of a more impressive 427 pound-feet of torque. Now in comparison, the 300 by turbo can be tuned to well over 600 horsepower. So it is kind of strange how that difference occurs between the two cars. I do by far still prefer this one though, and even around the track with a lot less power, well over 100 horsepower less, this is still the quicker of the two. Because it's more of a race car for the road, it is that full on exotic supercar, and of course, that's why it's here in this series. Now, depending on whether you fit it with all of the upgrades in road form, or convert it to its RM or race modify form, it weighs between 1,058 kilos in road form, which is great, or down to 1,026 with the race upgrade. So even without the upgrade, it's still really lightweight, but of course, the other main advantage of that RM conversion is the added downforce. And for some people, perhaps the livery as well, although personally, I prefer it without the livery. Now the horsepower per ton is 450, in peak form on the road version, 464 on the race version. And the price tag is pretty good, it's quite high, but at the same time for an exotic, it's pretty good. 137,000 credits is way less than most of the other cars in this series. In fact, this might even be the cheapest supercar on Gran Turismo 2. So that's kind of a good start for this vehicle. It may not have the sheer numbers of its little brother in effect, but what it does have is a much more race car for the road kind of vibe. Whereas the other model, the Bi Turbo, it doesn't have that at all. It's a great car, and it's a monster in a straight line. In fact, in a straight line, it can leave this car for dead, but around corners, there's no comparison. This car is lower, wider, has chunkier tyres, that wider track, which gives it much more of a race car stance, and especially with the race conversion, the downforce makes such a big difference, because the handling on this car is far from perfect. It's kind of weird, in fact. The first lap that I did with it in preparation for this review went perfectly. The second lap, I spun out almost immediately, and it's kind of a weird car in that way. It has excellent handling right up until the point where it doesn't. Not many cars do that. Cars tend to be quite predictable for the most part, not in as much as knowing what they're going to be beforehand, but in as much as once you've done one or two laps with it, you can pretty much predict what it's going to do. This is not one of those cars. This car can change on a dime. It can have brilliant handling one second, like a full-on race car, but then the next second it can just have snap oversteer and completely spin out without warning. So that is something that you do need to go into driving this car, buying this car, tuning this car, with that in mind. Now, if you are prepared for that, you tune it accordingly, give it a bit of camber, change up the diff, maybe fit the race conversion and uh, increase the downforce, for instance, which does make a huge difference, then you can like it for what it is, and I personally love it for what it is. This is my probably favourite French car in real life. I love the Espace F1, but that's just a totally different kind of vehicle. That would probably be my favourite car from Gran Turismo 2, but in the real world, at least off the top of my head, if I could actually own any French car, I think I would probably choose this one, because it's just such a cool car to me. 
Now, in terms of all-round ability, and whether or not you should buy it, well, of course, to some degree, that will always depend on the person. But if you do decide to play Gran Turismo 2, this is definitely one of the cars that I would recommend as a highlight, more so than the 300. The 300 has the sheer power and the straight line speed, but this one really is the all-round package. It's got the looks, the sound, the pricing, the straight line speed to some degree, and the cornering ability. Again, to some degree, it won't be for everyone, that's for sure. Some people might find this to be something of an infuriating car, and I can completely understand that. For me personally, it was infuriating some of the time, how it would just suddenly go from being great to suddenly very slippery and twitchy. In race form, that happens a lot less. You can still get the tail out, again, as you can see in this video, but it's much more composed, much more controlled, and it's not just having the lower weight that does that, it really is the downforce that makes all the difference. So if you do get the chance to play GT2, or if you already own the game, well, chances are you've probably driven this car if you do own Gran Turismo 2, but if you haven't, because let's face it, Venturi is a fairly easy dealership to overlook, even in real life. It's not a company that most people talk about that much. Personally, I've always loved them, but it is a highlight for sure. The 400 GT in particular kind of offers the best of both worlds between the 300 in its road form and the 600 LM as a full-on race car. Both of those are great as well, but this is the standout for me, and it's kind of the flagship of the company as well. So overall, that's it for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.